So we're gonna step back a little and look at various ways of interpolating uh, data to affect uh, the different types of geometry. So you'll see, I think in the last couple videos, we looked at very much linear interpolation. So in the case of the distance or the relationship between uh, different points, but that distance directly affected in a linear fashion the size of different shapes or the geometry of different shapes. Uh, we also looked briefly at how you might invert that, so things that are close might have a higher value than things that are further away that have a lower value. That's a way to invert that interpolation. Um, and then there's a couple other ways that we're going to look covering this. So it's kind of, it's not exactly transforming geometry, but it's understanding how these different parameters can be interpolated a little bit differently. So we'll start off just again kind of reiterating that linear interpolation where one point distance um, to a series of other points will directly affect the the length of a curve um, and then the other ones will kind of show their own kind of unique characteristics. So you'll see we'll look at four different varieties. The first again sticking with the linear interpolation. So I'm going to reference that curve. See a little bit more here. I'm going to divide it. So we just have an equal number of segments. Um, let's just maybe add a little bit more. So I'll just create that as a 15. And then I'm also going to create a point on this curve as something that we're going to use to measure the distance. So because we're just using one point, uh, we can just simply use um, this distance component, right? So the distance between all these points versus the distance between this point. Or we can stick with what we've been using as the closest points, which is going to give us the same exact results. Obviously, if we have multiple points, um, that can start to affect it. And maybe we'll get to that towards the end to show that relationship. So again, this is giving us a distance between this point and all these points. And basically, we're going to create a series of curves that represent that relationship. So let's go to curve, and I'm just going to use our line SDL. So we have a start point. Uh, the direction in this case, we want them to just go in the Y direction. Right, and then the length is going to be based off of this distance value. So as soon as I plug that in, we'll start to see that relationship, right? So this one that's really close, it's got essentially a uniform height into that distance. And as they obviously get further, it changes. So as I begin to move this, we have this kind of direct linear interpolation of height in these curves in relationship to their distance between points. So it's a good way to just kind of understand how this uh, distance between points work. So pretty straightforward, I think. So let's um, just copy and paste this, re-reference this curve. And so now let's remap this. So basically, maybe we don't want it to be a direct relationship. Maybe we want to slightly scale or skew this information. And we can do that using our remapping component to do just that. So it could be maybe um, this is just incrementally smaller and this isn't as high. We kind of essentially could just scale it down this overall height or we could scale it up. And again, you'll see what that looks like and how it actually starts to fit into the next series of interpolation. So what we want to do is take these distances and that's what we're going to remap. So I'm going to go to math domain 
remap numbers. So basically it's looking at all those values that we have and those are obviously going to change as we move this guy around. We also need to know that domain of values. So basically what's the shortest distance versus what's the longest distance. And we looked at that a little bit before, but that's just using our bounds component. So now um, you'll see that this is always going to give us our shortest distance and longest distance. And like I said, as this changes, our domain values change as well. So what we can do is based off of just that information is begin to remap it using our own kind of domain. So instead of, let's look at this again. Instead of having a domain of 0.5 to 7.5, we can actually adjust those to be a different range of domain values. And I'll keep this just to kind of show for comparison, but we can actually just construct our domain on its own. So maybe the smallest value even though I want them to all be a linear interpolation, maybe I want that value to start off at around two, right? So even though it's only 0.5, I want it to start with a height of two. And in this case, maybe I don't want it to have as high of a range, so maybe I want it to be five. So let's just copy and paste. So this is what the new domain is saying, right? It's just the same value. But what that's going to do is basically say, okay, take this range of values between those original values between 0.5 and 7.5 and remap them to fit within this new domain. And I'll just, again, kind of copy and paste this to show you. So these are the original values, right? They're just kind of all within that versus what these new remap values. So you'll see that 7.5, which was the highest, this is going to remap it to be 5. So when I look at here, you'll see that that's 5. The 6.5, which is in between that, has been remapped to 5, or sorry, 4.57. And so it gives you this kind of nice rescaling of data. And so now when I plug that into here, You'll see it still has this kind of direct or linear interpolation, but it's been remapped to have different uh, domain values. So I can obviously shrink it so that maybe the lowest is one, maybe the highest is 10 or whatever. You can make them much tighter. So maybe the lowest is eight and the highest is now 10. So that's a way of, again, it's still a linear interpolation to some degree, but it's just been remapped to have different vary, varying levels. And it's a little hard to explain when this might be appropriate, but as we again get into the more advanced scripting, you'll start to see the value to remap values. And we'll actually use it a little bit um, in the next couple scripts as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this once more. Set one curve. So how do we just invert these values? Maybe we want to use those same values, but just invert them. So that way, this highest value is actually corresponding to the closer, and then as it gets further, they shrink. So we can actually still use this remap to help us out with that. So what's interesting is I can take this bounding domain I can deconstruct it. So there's my start and there's my end. And then I can reconstruct it by just flipping these. So now, again, the furthest one is going to be that shorter value. This new one is 7.5. So instead of it going from 0 0.5 to 7.5, now it goes from 7.5 to 0 0.5. And that's how you can effectively invert these values, right? So now it's um, just the opposite of that. Um, you don't have to have it perfectly interpolated. It could be a mix of inverting and 
uh, remapping it. So again, I can construct my own domain where again, maybe the closer is now a 15 and the lowest is now a three. And so now effectively, the closer it is, the taller that's going to be. So let's look at one more, which is the much more kind of uh, complex one. It's not really that complicated, but um, it creates a lot different kind of uh, varying results. And they're based off of all sorts of different graphs that you essentially can assign. So we'll stick with um, just these parts for now. There's a couple different ways we can do the graph mapper. So let's go ahead and say set one curve. And again, all of this will kind of start to respond. So in order to do this, we're actually going to go back to our parameters input and look at graph mapper. I'm going to go ahead and right click and say let's just stick with a Bezier graph for now. It's going to just default to a linear kind of interpolation so it's basically the same thing so distance relates to height. Um, we can edit this because it just defaults to a domain of zero to one. So if I double click, you can see those values. However, you can manually change them. So um, it's a little bit more tricky because if this distance changes, then you have to, by default, uh, change these values. So what I like to do is just immediately remap it to fit within this zero to one domain. So again, let's go to math, remap, minimum and maximum. And it's just going to default again to 0 to 1, which is what's going to match this graph. So that makes life easier. And you can actually start to see these red lines um, are kind of indicating where those distances are. But in this case, the thing I do want to change is the y value. So this is the same thing that we are doing with this um, Kind of length, so this is what's going to go into here. But instead of it being, um, you can do it actually a couple ways. So let's actually just keep it like that and drop it into there. So it's literally just going from a height of zero to one. Sometimes, if you just don't want to really mess with the domains in here, you can just add a multiplier afterwards. So I'm going to just take this value, multiply it by something like 12. And that becomes our new length, right? But this is where we can start to get more interesting because it literally just looks like these other ones. But that's because it's, again, defaults to a linear. But if I grab these wings, I can start to affect this curve. And you can start to see that it literally begins to match that. And maybe we can add a couple more points to make it a little more dense to get you a better idea of what that looks like. So now we can see as that distance changes, um, it starts to essentially mimic it. And it's basically mirroring it because uh, it's essentially taking that, um, looking at it in both directions. But if I were to just kind of slide it all the way to the other end, you can see that it's pretty much identical to that graph. You can really start to kind of affect how that looks. And there's all sorts of different graph types. Um, you can kind of treat it like this. So these are where you can start to get really complex. And the thing that I want to warn you to be careful with is that this can easily distort the data that you're trying to um, model. I usually use the graph mapper as more of a visual tool if I want to show that maybe there's a kind of nonlinear 
change of either shape or color that there's maybe a more dra dramatic or drastic change from the start and then it just kind of subsides as it gets further away that's more that's more of an appropriate way to use this because sometimes using this can really begin to distort the data uh, beyond what you want to use it for so again i think this is important especially as we get into the more advanced uh, scripting that you understand there's a ways in which we can interpolate this a good example that i can tell you right now where you want to remap these values um, when you're using something for distance as it relates to the size or scale of something um, the scaling component in grasshopper works where if you want it to retain its same size, it's going to have a scale value of 1. If you want it to be half, it has a scale value of 0.5. If you want it to double, it has a scale value of 2. Obviously, these distances aren't going to usually have that exact correlation. So that's an appropriate way where you want to remap it to fit within that scale factor. So a lot of times you're going to be taking um, numeric values that represent distance, direction, size, and compare that with another type of um, numeric value. And that's where it's important to remap or reinterpolate that data.